Tristan, no one come to this point in the podcast just to understand lifestyle and what you spend your money on. So you're making all this money. As Andrew said, billion dollars. What do you actually do with it? What's your spending habits like? We spend a lot of money on cars. And that's more because <clears> of Andrew than me. If it were up to me, we'd have about eight to 10 cars. I think, I don't know what number Andrew told you. I think it's upwards of 51, 52 now. Yep. I don't know what he's been ordering lately. So he may have said a higher yeah, yeah. number. He said yesterday he bought an Aston Martin. Yes, um, I think he said he also ordered the new Revioto Lamborghini as well. Yeah, uh, no, okay, fine. So that puts us, what, 54, 55? Anyway, I don't know. But uh, it's a lot of money that we spend on cars. When you get to a certain level, there are, there are things, you run out of things to spend money on. I'm not going to say where I have real estate, but uh, real estate would be a good purchase if I had any money, wink, wink, of course, all my real estate in Romania has been taken. But uh, real estate is an incredible investment. I, um, I like historic buildings. I like antiques. I like art. I like suits. I buy books that cost a lot of money. I buy first edition books uh, mm -hmm. from, from the 1800s. What sort of books? I mean, just, just really great novels. But the first ever printing of a book costs a lot of money. And the good mm. thing about books is none of them are here in case the Romanian police are listening, of course. <laughs> but the good thing about books is someone will come in your house, someone who doesn't know what, exactly what they're looking at. In fact, 99.9% .9 of people will come into your house and see a bookshelf one book's five pounds, that book's 10 pounds, they're just old leather books. One of them's 140 grand. No one knows mm. that that store of wealth is there. So even things like these cigarette lighters, the police, when they raid your house, don't steal your cigarette lighters. But they don't think they that don't it's going to be 55 grand. No, they'll take this watch and this watch is cheaper than that lighter. Yeah. So the cool thing about antique books, <clears throat> antique furniture, um, things like that, is they're a really cool store of wealth that never loses you money. And nobody knows what they're worth. So people will just walk past them. But then when you do meet that guy who sees uh, your piano, for example, you've just purchased, and like, oh, that's a that's an 1892 Erard piano. You're like, okay, this guy's my kind of guy, you know? So I don't have a piano at my house, but I am, I am buying all these things. I also spend lots of money on clothes. I have probably, my wardrobe is upwards of half a million pounds. Half a million? Half a million pounds, absolutely. Bro. In, in, in suits and Yeah, shoes. I mean, to be fair, you're tailored, like the way your clothes fit in and everything like that is 10 times anyway. And you go to London for your suits as well, or used to anyway. Okay. Well, they come to me. They come obviously, to you. I'm, I'm one of their best yeah, customers. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the name of the tailor here because I don't need people copying me and like lengthening the wait times. Even well, if I don't know if they could afford to copy you. If even you if someone to. could afford it, yeah. But um, did you see recently the? I think it was the Indian Prime Minister had a blue suit on, and when you zoomed into the little yellow stripes, it was actually 24 karat gold with his name. Is it? Like that, yeah. Look it up, anyone at home. Anyone, I've just ordered a three-piece suit in that. That cost me upwards of 50. What, with like your name there as well? Yeah, there, it's, it's, it's gold stripes yep. that from a distance looks like a navy blue suit with gold stripes. When yep. you zoom in, the, the 24 karat gold woven into the material will read Tristan Tate, Tristan Tate, Tristan Tate. Yeah, that's sick. So there's, um, I bought one there. That cost me over 50 grand for that suit. That's on order. But yeah, I have lots of nice clothes. So if you think half a million pounds, 10, 10 suits like that would be half a million pounds. It's well over that. I spend lots of money on clothes. Is there anything that you can't buy? Is there anything you think to yourself, you know what, me and Andrew need to work harder so we can get that? I'll give you an example. There was a video that went viral recently where Jeff Bezos, he has a $500 million mega yacht, mm -hmm. but then as his security yacht is another $100 million yacht. Yes. Now, arguably, I, I can't afford that. So, but does it get to a point where you think, okay, I want that, so I need to get that? No, because I don't, and this sounds like cope, and when lots of people speak this way, they're just coping for things they'll never have. And I'll make the position perfectly clear right now. If I wanted something I couldn't afford, I would tell you. That's the kind of person I am. I like renting yachts. I like renting private jets. I don't want to buy a plane. We had one for six months. I'm not sure if Andrew told you the story. I feel in the last podcast, yeah. Yeah, but so we did have a plane for a short time, but I don't want to buy a private plane. I don't want to buy a yacht. I don't like the ocean, don't like sailing. I'll, buy, I'll rent one for a week. It might cost 400 grand for the week to rent it, mm. but I can afford that. I don't want a yacht. Now, if I were to buy one, I could buy a 50, 60, 70 million dollar yacht. Like I, I could buy a really nice impressive yacht. boat. Yeah. Don't want one. So now I'm at the point where the only things I can't afford are some of the world's most expensive houses. I mean, there are houses in California, 300, 400 million. I haven't got that much liquid. I can't buy those houses, but I can buy the exact houses I like all the cars I want, all the clothes I want, all the suits I want. Uh, and more importantly, I can take care of my mother. I can take care of everybody who I love. My mother flies on private jets now. <laughs> she doesn't fly uh, economy or even business or first anymore. And, you know, I can, me and Andrew can run our charity. We can 
help out the world as much as I guess two people can. I don't, there's nothing that I now look forward to and think one day I'll be rich enough for that because I'm currently rich enough for everything that I want. And if I wanted a boat, I would admit it. I don't want to own a boat mm. ever. You know, you like the public know you and Andrew for flying on private jets. But can you remember the first time you went out of economy to maybe business or yes. first or whatever it was? Tell me that story. I remember. So the first time I ever flew business class was I was probably 25 or mm -hmm. 24, around that time. And I was flying to Thailand. And the first time I ever flew business class, and this is a lesson about appreciating things that, that you lose over time. When I was saying I'm trying to stay grounded, I'm trying to stay humble. Now, business class, which airline was it? I think it may have been Aeroflot, the Russian airline. Amazing business class experience. Obviously, you get the lay flat bed, all the room you want, the yep. food is amazing. And on Aeroflot, all the air hostesses are really good looking as well, which yep. is an added bonus. bonus. Yep. Yeah, so I was flying to Bangkok from London and I got on the plane, it's amazing, glass of champagne, ate a bit of food. After 45 minutes, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Let me try the lay flat bed. And I put the bed on lay flat and I blinked and I was in Bangkok. And I thought, I just Yo, spent, three, time travel. I spent three and a bit grand to sleep. That's a waste of time. So then what happened is for the next four or five years after that, every time I flew business or every time I flew first, I would never sleep just out of principle. I'll try and drink all your whiskey, eat all your food, <laughs> eat all your caviar, you know, take the showers, go to the bar. Just let me just enjoy it to its absolute fullest. And that was, I guess, my period of maximum appreciation for the experience of not being an economy. Plus, I'm big. I had to get rich. Flying an economy is painful. I'm six foot four. I'm just over six foot four. It's bad. So nowadays, if I fly business or first, because there are some journeys, if I'm flying by myself to the United States, renting a, you need a massive jet to fly transatlantic. Yep. It makes more sense to fly first class. And I like first class. Uh, nowadays, I will go to sleep though, because I don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's really it, so, so I've, yeah. I've, had, I've had the fun of the private jets in the first class. Now it's just how I travel. Mm -hmm. And private jets are so convenient because of the airport check-in process and the landing process. It all takes 10 minutes as opposed to three hours. Uh, but now I will go to sleep. I won't try to drink all the gin just out of some weird principle. So yeah, I feel like I'm now numb to it. So you brothers used to own a private jet. What's the story with that? <clears throat> and why, like, why have you not got it anymore? Very short story. Andrew bought a plane. We didn't need a plane and we like driving everywhere. So our plane was in Romania. Mm -hmm. We drive from Romania to Spain over the course of three or four days in our supercars. We're in Spain, we wanted to fly to London. Trying to organize our jet, had to get a crew flown to Bucharest, from Bucharest to Spain, from Spain to London. It would cost, even though I owned the plane, more to do all that legwork of getting the plane to move around with all the crew, to get the plane to Spain to bring me to London. Mm then it would be just to fly the plane, uh, just to charter a private charter jet plane, and yeah, get from a Spain to, from London, Spain to yeah. London. So because I like driving everywhere, immediately we realized we don't need to own this. You plane. don't make sense. Yeah, and it was yeah. a 16 person jet. If me and Andrew are flying to London, I'll get a six person jet if it's available. It's still enough space for two mm. men. There's a couch, I don't care, it's, it's okay. And a few girls. So, yeah, so we realized very quickly that the way we live our lives, we don't need a private jet. If you are a businessman and you are flying constantly, twice a day, three times a day to all these different cities, say you're the CEO of a big multinational company, yes, you need a private jet. I don't. I'll go weeks without flying. Mm. So it didn't make any sense. Sold it, never looked back. Don't want one. But I still fly on private jets. And obviously people will say, ha ha, that's rented. I'm like, this flight costs 50 grand just one way. Like you don't make that in a year. Like it's always people who are who are jealous or don't have the things that you have that come at you with, with stupid. I mean, there's still a conspiracy theory. I rent my cars. I mean, my last name is stitched into the seats of the Bugatti. Oh, and Bugatti it, yeah. posted it on their official yep. Instagram and tagged me and like rented cars. How, yeah, how whatever. Did, how like, did you feel when Bugatti removed that post? I understand <clears> the position <throat> businesses have to take. You know, the funny thing is I wouldn't associate with a human trafficker. Human trafficker? I've got a daughter. What, people who like kidnap people and sell them? Mm. Scum of the earth. If I met someone and said, oh yeah, he was in jail for human trafficking, he got convicted, I'd, I'd punch him in the face. Yeah. Like why on earth would anyone want to associate with these people? And it's a very tricky situation now that they've labeled me as a human trafficker for trying to help friends out on TikTok allegedly and stealing the money, which obviously never happened. And that's all going to be proven, of course, in time. 
Uh, it's very weird when people like disassociate with me if they know me personally, and a few people have tried to distance themselves from me, I'm like, okay, fuck this person, because they know me. They know I'm not this. But if someone I don't know, or a company, doesn't want to associate with me or work with me because of the allegation, I'm like, yeah, I get it. They don't know I'm innocent. They don't know what the Romanian police force is like. They don't know what DCOP can be mm. like in targeting people. They don't understand the corruption. They don't get it. They just think, Tristan Tate, human trafficker, okay, let's distance ourselves. Yeah, yeah I get it. It's fine. And when I'm exonerated, I will never work with or these these companies again. Bugatti just removed a post. That's fine. Bugatti are good. I'm still going to buy their cars. But there are various people in London who, I don't know, made items for me. I don't know, ties, et cetera, is, is one story. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. But as soon as I got out of jail, disassociated with me. I was yeah. like, okay, well, that's weird. So I buy your stuff and I pay for it. But you don't want me saying that I buy from your company? Fine, I won't buy from your company. And when I'm exonerated... I'm sure all these people are going to come crawling back. Yeah, probably I'm, will. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. one of the best customers for a lot of this stuff in the world, but I, I just won't associate with them as, I guess, not even revenge, because I don't think in a revenge kind of mindset, just principle. You don't want to associate with me if they falsely accuse me of something? Well, when everything's fine and I'm flying high again and my name's clear, I still have a clean criminal record even now, but when, when, I, when I have no accusations hanging over my head, then I no won't, talk, I won't talk to you yeah. then.